Hey everyone, welcome back to another video tutorial by Simply Learn. In this session, we will be learning about Kotlin functions. A function helps in reducing the duplicacy of the code and also used for information hiding. The Kotlin function is a very important topic of Kotlin language and in this tutorial we will cover all the important points or concepts of Kotlin functions. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we will be covering today. So we'll start with Kotlin functions then we'll understand function parameters function returning values then Kotlin functions with no return type after that the higher order functions and lambda function and at last we will study higher order function with lambda functions so without further ado let's get started so our first topic is Kotlin functions functions in Kotlin is very much similar to functions in Java there are some minor differences in between them so let's have a look at them a Kotlin function can be defined as a block of code which is used to hold the data this block of code has a name and is defined with fun keyword for example as you can see fun is the keyword here and info here is the name of the function a Kotlin function divides the program into small modules these functions can easily be invoked by making a call and to make a call we use the name of the function with parenthesis as we can see in the example the function info is getting invoked from the main function that is from the main function we are making a call to the info function by using the name of the function with parenthesis now let's understand function parameters can be defined as the information that are passed to the function so basically functions can accept the data or information passed to them these informations and data are passed in the form of parameters after receiving the data or information function can easily use this data to calculate or display as per the function definition the parameters are specified after the name of the function and is mentioned inside parentheses separated by commas and we can easily pass as much parameters as we want for example as you can see function calc is accepting three parameters a b and c of integer type these three arguments or values are passed from the main function where the function call is made so a b and c three arguments are passed to the calc function and the function is providing the average of these three values also the values that are passed to the functions are called arguments and the parameters are the values that are defined in the function definition so now let's understand the next topic which is function returning values just like printing the values functions can also return values to return a value or values a return keyword is used also while returning a value the return type of the function is also specified as you can see in the example int is the return type of the function and return keyword is used to return values to the main function where they are getting printed so now moving on to the functions with no return types Kotlin function with no return type in Kotlin language if the function is not returning anything then we don't need to specify any return type but if we want to mention the return type then we can add unit as the return type so basically unit type in Kotlin is like void type in Java that means it is used with function that doesn't return anything the next is higher order functions the higher order function in Kotlin is a function that can accept the functions as a parameter and can also return a function we have heard that function accept variables 
but we haven't heard about function accepting other functions in higher order function we can easily do that so as we can see in the example of higher order function the name of the function is high order and it is accepting two integer values that is num1 and num2 and a function whose name is f name now this function f name is accepting two integer values and its return type is int inside the function body we are calling f name function and printing it let's understand it with the help of an example so this is our kotlin playground here we'll do an example of higher order function we'll do a basic example of higher order function so let's start first of all we'll create the main function function main and inside this main function let's name the higher order function as high order you can name it as per your choice i have named it high order and now let's pass the variables let's say 50 80 and let's say 40 now we have to pass the function to this higher order function so we can do that with the help of these two colon operators and then the name of the function let's say the name of the function is my function so here we are passing three variables and a function to the higher order function now we'll create the higher order function we'll write fun keyword then high order and now inside the parenthesis we'll write num1 int the parameters that is 50 80 40 we have to write the parameters similarly num3 now after that here we will here we are accepting a function as well so we'll write the name let's say name of the function is func name and here int int and int the type of the values that this function will be accepting here also we have to mention the types of the function that this function will be accepting and the return type of the function as well so int is the return type of this function we'll have to mention that as well and by mistake we have done this we have to use arrow operator for that and yeah now we'll write the print basically we'll call the function in which we will define the definition of this function so let's say the yeah the function name was func name and these three are the parameters num1 num2 and num3 we are passing these arguments now let's create this function definition so we'll create fun keyword my function function is accepting num1 of integer type num2 of integer type and num3 of integer type now after that the return type of the function is int all right now let's say we want to do the average of these three numbers so what we'll do is we'll write return num1 plus num2 plus num3 divided by 3 all right so now all we need to do is just enclose it within the brackets yeah now let's try to run this as you can see 50 plus 40 90 90 and 80 is equals to 170 170 on divided by when it is divided by 3 it will give you 56.3 something and as we have used integer value so it is showing 56 only so what we are doing here is first of all we are calling the high order function so basically this is a higher order function 
and we have named it high order and we are passing three integer values and one function so these three integer values are passing over here are uh, these are the parameters and this is how we accept function as a parameter this is the syntax of it after that we are here calling the definition of this function so this is the definition we are calling this function and this is the definition of this function the value is calculated over here and then is returned here and then here it is getting printed so the answer or the output of this program is 56 as we can see so this is a higher order function now let's understand lambda function lambda function lambda is an abbreviated form of function writing the lambda function is written without a name and is enclosed in curly brackets the lambda function has the basic syntax arguments or variables are mentioned on the left hand side of the arrow operator and the body of the function is present on the right hand side of the arrow operator in the example avg is the lambda variable n1, n2 and n3 on the left side of the arrow operator are the parameters and on the right side is the function body that is the average of three parameters. So as we have understood the lambda functions and the higher order function as well, now let's understand how to use higher order function with lambda function. So lambda function allows us to eliminate the code and write the code more compactly. As we can see in this example, we have used the lambda function instead of the normal function which has decreased the lines of code. Now let's understand this with the help of an example. So this is our example of higher order function that we have done previously. Now we will do this example or edit this example with lambda function. So now we'll understand how to use higher order function and lambda function together and it will make our code shorter and more compact. So as we can see this was the here we have used two colon operators with the name of the function. Now all we need to do is to create a lambda function over here and for that as we know that there is no name for a lambda function the lambda function is enclosed in two brackets. Now let's say num1 and this is the parameters or the variables that is on the left hand side of the arrow operator then num2 num3 after that here we can see here we have used the arrow operator now we have moved to the right hand side of the arrow operator which is the function body now we will use the parenthesis num1 plus num2 plus num3 so basically this is the function body or the function definition we can say so now here we have we are doing the average of these c numbers as we have done previously in the higher order function now here we don't have to use this function we can just eliminate this one now as we can see our function is almost done and let's try to run this program As we can see the output is 56. So here we have used the lambda function. So this part which is the left hand side part of the arrow operator this is the variables or the values and this part on the right hand side is the function body. So the lambda function is enclosed in the in two brackets as we can see. Here we have passed the three variables and this is the lambda function. Also, we have eliminated the my function function because in that particular function we are just defining or doing the calculation and that we have already done in this part. So we no longer need that function. So as you can see this is here we are using higher order function with lambda function. And with that we have come to the end of this tutorial. If you like this video on Kotlin function, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching, stay safe and keep learning.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.